In this video, we are going to look at free radical substitution reactions of the alkanes. This is normally the first reaction mechanism that you will meet at uh, A-level chemistry. Um, and actually, it's one of the more complex. So it's well worth going to this in some detail. So let's have a look at the free radical substitution, first of all, of methane, as it's our simplest alkane. So free radical substitution, funnily enough, involves radicals. And a radical is a species with an unpaired electron. So here's our overall reaction. We're going to take methane, react it with chlorine, make chloromethane and hydrogen chloride. And that's the uh, symbol equation. We can add in our pictures of our molecules there as well. So we can visualize it in uh, a little bit more detail. And uh, you can see that uh, we are taking a hydrogen off of our methane, replacing it with a chlorine atom and making hydrogen chloride. And for this to work, we need UV light. And the UV light is essential for the first step of the reaction. So let's have a look at what is actually going on. So when we think about how does this reaction take place? Well, in theory, what could happen um, to make my chloromethane and hydrogen chloride is I could just take one chlorine molecule and one methane molecule to give us the products. But is that actually what happens? Uh, can I just do uh, one chlorine and one methane? Um, is that going to work? Well, we can look at a reaction mechanism to work out what's going on. How do our atoms rearrange themselves from the reactants to make our products? So the first step is our initiation step. And for this is uh, why we need the UV light. It takes a chlorine molecule and it breaks the chlorine-chlorine bond. And each uh, chlorine atom gets one of the electrons that was in that covalent bond. Uh, we call this homolytic fission, where the bond splits evenly. One electron goes to one chlorine and the other electron goes to the other chlorine. And uh, I've represented those electrons that were in a bond uh, in uh, red by the red dot and the little star there, because we're going to follow these electrons as they go through the uh, reaction. So what's happening now? Well, we're going to look at what we call propagation steps. And this is what really drives the reaction. So first of all, I take one of those chlorine free radicals and we represent chlorine free radicals by a little dot. A dot is a radical um, and it meets a methane molecule. And uh, when it meets a methane molecule, and you can see I've represented the electrons in a carbon hydrogen bond in methane, by uh, blue uh, dot and star, um, that chlorine atom comes along and it takes away that hydrogen atom from the uh, methane. So it forms a new chlorine hydrogen bond, which we have in hydrogen chloride, and it's left now with a methyl radical. Um, that carbon um, has got just one of the electrons from the bond, the hydrogen has taken the star blue electron to form the hydrogen chlorine bond. So I've replaced the chlorine free radical by a methyl free radical. So that is our first propagation step. Uh, we now have a second propagation step where my methyl free radical, which I generated in step number one, meets another chlorine molecule to give me my product chloromethane and another chlorine free radical. So let's summarize those. So here are my uh, two propagation steps. That's step number one, where I take uh, my chlorine free radical I made in the initiation step, meets methane to produce my methyl free radical and HCl. And that methyl free radical then reacts with another chlorine molecule to give me a chloromethane and a chlorine free radical. Key things to note, is that uh, I started with a chlorine free radical in step number one and I have created another chlorine free radical in step two. So that's why propagation drives the reaction because I continually regenerate um, a chlorine free radical to then go through the cycle again. The uh, other thing to notice is uh, I've just highlighted my two reactants there, which are methane and chlorine and my two products. So propagation um, is where I take my reactants and make my products. So let's put those together in one slide. Uh, there's my overall reaction. 
initiation step and my two propagation steps. So let's look at this um, where with our molecular models. There's my uh, chlorine uh, breaking up to produce my chlorine free radicals in my initiation step. And here are pictures of my two propagation steps. So we can now look at where our atoms and electrons actually go during a reaction, because we've got both our initiation step here and our propagation steps. So remember, one initiation step for which we need the UV light, and then we always have two propagation steps. So here we go. Let's first of all look at our initiation step. So from that, we break our chlorine-chlorine bond and as we said before, one electron goes to one chlorine and the other goes to the other chlorine, and we call this homolytic fission. So that gives us our two free radicals on the right there. Now, one of those is now going to be used in the propagation step, but notice the other one uh, with the red star to represent its uh, lone electron is not used during this reaction at all. So we're gonna use uh, that one free radical in our propagation step, and that will then we react with the methane, which is one of our reactants, um, to produce our methyl free radical. And then straight away, that methyl free radical will react with another chlorine molecule to give us our product of chloromethane and um, another chlorine free radical. So in white, I've highlighted our two products of chloromethane and hydrogen chloride. So let's have a look at uh, rearranging these into our reactants and products and any intermediates that we have. So first of all, you can see our chlorine free radicals there um, wobbling. So that chlorine free radical that's produced in the initiation step is used in one of the propagation steps. So we can remove that because it's produced and then used up. So it's an intermediate. And in a similar way, our methyl free radicals um, are going to be uh, produced. One is produced in our propagation step, first one, and then used straight away in our second propagation step. Um, free radicals are incredibly reactive, so they do not stay around for long. So we're gonna get rid of those as well. So let's now rearrange these. So those are my two reactants, methane and chlorine. And here come my two products, like so. And I've just moved that other chlorine free radical out of the way for that. We're now left with our chlorine molecule and our chlorine free radicals. Now, uh, obviously we know that our chlorine free radicals uh, have come from that uh, chlorine molecule um, and also from the original chlorine molecule we used in our initiation step. So we have two chlorine free radicals that we've generated in this reaction mechanism, but we haven't used it. So we can remove those and we are left with our chlorine molecule, like so. So in order to get this reaction, the reaction mechanism to work, we can't just take one metha, methane molecule and one chlorine molecule um, to get our products. We actually need two chlorine molecules to do that. So we can put uh, those of those there, and this is my two chlorine molecules, like so. If you look at the equation, it looks like you could do this reaction. Um, one methane reacts with one chlorine molecule, but in fact, that will not work. You actually need um, one methane will need two chlorines to react, and then uh, two chlorine-free radicals will be left over. Uh, remember, we started off with those two uh, yellow uh, electrons in the chlorine-chlorine bond. One has ended up in the carbon-chlorine bond um, and the other, of course, is in a chlorine-free radical which we didn't use. Uh, for the two red electrons that were in the chlorine, other chlorine-chlorine bond, um, one has ended up in the HCl bond um, and again the other one has not been used. And then finally we had those two blue electrons in the uh, methane uh, carbon to hydrogen bond one is in the carbon chlorine um, bond and the other one is in the uh, chlorine hydrogen bond so you can see how electrons have come from three different molecules so awkward things must come to an end and how is this reaction going to uh, terminate 
um, because we have these propagation steps happening which uh, use one chlorine free radical and make another. So how can we remove chlorine free radicals? Well, we need to do the reverse of initiation step. We need to join two free radicals together. So two termination steps are here. Um, you could take a chlorine free radical and it could meet a methyl free radical to give my product. Um, however, you can take any two free radicals. So equally, a termination step would be the reverse of the initiation step. And another termination step would actually be two methyl radicals coming together to give me ethane. And ethane would therefore be a byproduct of the reaction. So that was methane. Now let's look at free radical of propane, which is going to be slightly more complicated. And um, the reason it's more complicated is because I can create two products. I could put the chlorine on uh, carbon number one to produce one chloropropane or on carbon number two to give me two chloropropane as shown by the equations there. And again, we need UV light to start the reaction off. So initiation is going to be very similar. Now, when we come to propagation, let's first of all look at propagation to make one chloropropane where the chlorine free radical will take a hydrogen from the first carbon and you can see again how I have regenerated my chlorine free radical. There are my two products created in the propagation steps. And here is a summary of the reaction with initiation and propagation. Uh, we also need to consider termination as well. So termination could involve my chlorine free radical now meeting a propyl uh, free radical, as shown there to give me my product one chloropropane, but equally to propyl free radicals could uh, react together to give me hexane. And now let's look at how we would create two chloropropane. Again, initiation would be the same. Propagation, however, now involves the chlorine removing a hydrogen from carbon number two, and then that uh, free radical reacting with the chlorine molecule to give me two chloropropane. Termination will involve uh, those two free radicals coming together in a similar way to the previous mechanism. And again, we can have another termination step by my two um, propyl free radicals coming together. However, they will obviously be joining in a different way. So that is it for free radical substitution. Hope you found that useful. As with all these presentations, if you go to chemistrytuition.net, you'll be able to download these slides.